watching the news from Bahrain Television. I'm Mary Claire. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Gudebiya Palace today His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Their Royal Highnesses asserted the Kingdom's successful foreign policy under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa had consolidated Bahrain's relations and cooperation with brotherly and friendly countries and paved the way for launching partnerships that support the national development programmes. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince reviewed a number of government initiatives aimed at reducing and addressing the level of public debt. In this regard, they stressed the need to support sectors that stimulate economic growth and restructure the national economy in a way that ensures reducing expenditure, increasing revenue and revising the government's subsidies policy. On the subject of latest regional and global developments, they affirmed the importance of distancing the region from conflicts and disputes so as to ensure it remains secure and stable with an atmosphere that would enable its countries to carry on their development step to meet expectations of the people. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Gudebiya Palace the Speaker of the Shura Council Ali Al Saleh, the Council of Representatives former Speaker Khalifa Al Dahrani and the first Deputy Speaker Ali Al Aradi along with several members of the Shura Council and MPs. His Royal Highness asserted national interests should top the priority, the foremost of which is the protection of the country's security and stability, as we are currently experiencing a world of challenges and conflicts of interest. He added, the highest national interest should proceed in order of importance, the fields of politics, economics and investment, since these are elements that should be used to safeguard national interest. His Royal Highness praised the role of MPs at international functions to showcase the real situation of human rights in the Kingdom, asserting the government's diligence on human rights emanates from mainly religious and patriotic obligations. He went on to emphasise the ongoing development process, which is greater than any other challenges, stressing the government is aware good management is necessary to achieve success, a fact the government endeavours to consecrate in its work, investing mainly in human resource education. Referring to the latest regional and international developments, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister stressed undermining security and stability in the region would negate effects and repercussions on all for many years.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, chaired today the weekly cabinet meeting at Gudaybia Palace in attendance of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister hailed His Majesty the King's speech in Egypt's Economic Development Conference by stressing the importance of unifying stances in order to overcome obstacles that threaten the security and stability of countries. He also hailed Bahrain's supportive stance towards Egypt and stressed the importance of enhancing cooperation with Egypt in various fields, and on an economic level in particular. The Cabinet hailed His Majesty the King's directives to further enhance joint economic and investment cooperation with Egypt. The Cabinet also congratulated Egypt President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi on the success of the forum through its initiative that aims to participate in the development of Egypt on various levels. The cabinet hailed the speech of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdelaziz El Saud, in which he affirmed KSA's keenness to enhance Arab and Islamic solidarity in order to overcome all threats that face the region. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister stressed the importance of the Bahrain International E-Government Forum 2015 for its workshops and sessions that aim to develop information and communication technology fields in the Kingdom. The Cabinet welcomed the European delegation participating in the Forum and hailed the major role of the Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Supreme Committee for Information and Communication Technology, Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, in developing the information and communication technology sector in the Kingdom. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister was briefed on the latest government facilities provided to Northern Governorate citizens, which include health, housing and educational facilities. After the meeting, the Minister of Information Affairs and Official Government Spokesman Isa Al Hamadi held a press conference in which he outlined the issues discussed on the agenda of the Cabinet meeting. The Minister said the Cabinet reviewed a draft law to establish an institute of recitation and training for Holy Quran teachers in order to develop a framework to preserve the culture of the Holy Quran. The Cabinet approved the prospective law. He also said the Cabinet approved the memorandum regarding the amendment of the Tokyo Protocol 1963 on offences and other criminal acts committed on board aircrafts. The amendment aims to improve the capacity of states and concerned parties through expanding the scope of their jurisdiction as regards to these crimes and the scope of legal protection. The Cabinet decided to ratify the amendment, accede to the protocol and transfer the memorandum to the Legislative Authority to implement the relevant constitutional measures. The Cabinet approved a memorandum regarding temporary fishing licences and decided to convert them into permanent licences in line with due process. The Cabinet also approved a memorandum regarding the rendition of industrial zones, including the re-evaluation of rentals. The memorandum aims to increase profits for the Ministry of Industry and Trade by renting industrial space. Government spokesman Isa Al Hamadi said the Cabinet approved a memorandum regarding the reorganisation of the Department of Communications at the Ministry of Transport and Telecommunication. The memorandum seeks to place the department under the office of the Minister of Transport and Telecommunication. He also said the Cabinet reviewed a report on the outcomes of the 19th Middle East Oil and Gas Show and Conference, MOIS. The report noted the event saw a wide range of delegates from the engineering and oil and gas sectors take part, some 8,000 participants in total. The report suggests the number of participants has increased by 700 compared to those of the 2013 MUS conference. The government spokesman said the Cabinet approved a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunication and Vice President of the National Authority of Qualification and Quality Assurance for Education and Training Board of Directors regarding the publication of the evaluation reports. He also said the Cabinet approved a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunication, Vice President of the National Authority and Qualification and Quality Assurance for Educational Training Board of Directors regarding assessment of the performance of educational institutions and professional training programs.
The Commander-in-Chief of the BDF, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, inspected today the new BDF residential apartments in Wadi Al Sail. He was welcomed on arrival by BDF Chief of Staff Zayb bin Sakar Al Naimi, Defence Under Secretary Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, Assistant Chief of Staff for Logistic and Supply Major General Yusuf Ahmed Malala, and other senior BDF officials. The Commander in Chief of the BDF toured the project where he expressed his gratitude to His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander, for his gesture to BDF affiliates. He also underlined BDF achievements at all levels for the sake of protecting the nation. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Al Naimi, paid an inspection visit to the National Test for Secondary Schools, which began today. It was held by the Ministry of Education in cooperation with the National Authority for Qualifications and Quality Assurance for Education and Training. The Minister of Education was briefed on the progress of the tests, stressing the importance of national tests, which are an external measurement of sorts of student performance for the sake of improving the performance of schools and their outcomes. He pointed out the tests and their results helped to keep abreast with developments of primary and secondary education in Bahrain, adding that the results of these examinations have positive effects, including the promotion of a culture of evaluation in schools and preparedness for external audits. In the second day of the Bahrain International E-Government Conference, a panel discussion along with more plenary sessions continued today with internationally and locally distinguished speakers. Several workshops also discussed future technology trends in smart cities and the best practices in e-government. For the first time, a high-level delegation of nearly 30 experts from the European Union, for the first time, a high-level delegation of nearly 30 experts from the European Union is attending the forum. The delegation is led by Ambassador Adam Kulak, representative of European Union and head of delegation of the European Union to Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman and Qatar, in conjunction with the EU GCC Science and Technology International Network. The forum is organised by the e-government authority at ISA Cultural Centre in association with Bahrain Society of Engineers, Projects Management Institute, Arabian Gulf Chapter and Youth Tech. Held under the patronage of Deputy Premier Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, the five-day event aims to bring together the brightest minds and latest solutions in e-government with a particular focus on the private sector and the theme Smart Cities Beyond Innovation. Very good evening. Thank you for joining us for the business news on Bahrain Television. The Bahrain All Shares Index closed today at 1,468.57 points, a decrease of 8.18 points below yesterday's closing level. The decrease followed a dip in the commercial banks, services and industrial sectors, although the former still represented the majority 71.55% of share value traded. Results show that 73 transactions took place today, with a volume of 1,121,813 shares, Worth 235,848 dinars traded. I'm handing over to Fatma with the sports. Thank Good you, evening, Fatma. Good evening. <laughs> Good 
evening and welcome to the sports, sports news on Bahrain Television. Bahrain yesterday continued to impress the fourth GCC Women's Games being held in Muscat. The Nationals added eight medals, five gold, two silver and one bronze in athletics, taekwondo and bowling, boosting their total tally to 26 medals, 14 gold, nine silver and three bronze to top the medals table after day eight. On the third and concluding day of the athletics, 10 finals took place as, the Bahr as Bahrain put on a brilliant show to win one gold medal and two silver. Mayam Al Ansari opened Bahrain's account of the day by coming first in the high jump event where she managed 1.70 meters overcoming UAE's Alia Al Hamadi which scored 1.59 meters and Sara Nasser with 1.53 meters of Kuwait who bagged the silver and bronze medals. And that's all from Bahrain Television's news center for now. We'll be back with more updates since 11. But until then, from all of the news team and myself, Mary Claire, thank you for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.